Hello, my name's Michael Abraham Sprod, and I'm an academic in the Department of Hebrew, Biblical and Jewish Studies. One of my key research areas and teach, teaching areas uh, is the history of Zionism, the history of the State of Israel, and also the history of the Israeli-Arab-Palestinian conflict. But today I wanted to focus on a topic that I think is often misrepresented and a term that's actually often misunderstood. For this reason, I've dubbed the title of this short presentation, A Short History of Zionism. When we think of this word, many, many ideas come to mind. In fact, quite often in society today, it's actually regarded as quite pejorative. But essentially, Zionism is nothing more than Jewish nationalism. Zionism as a modern movement emerges actually in the middle of the 19th century, largely as a result of modernity itself, and that is both political, social, and also religious forces that occur in Europe, and most notably, of course, that of the French Revolution. What results is an entire discussion based on do the Jews represent a nation and what would it mean to reconstitute that nation and also essentially and this is where the, the topic is discussed quite often where would this Zion be? After all when we use the word Zion Zion itself is actually a small a very very small part in the old city of Jerusalem. It's actually uh, called Mount Zion, but it's one of the many words that we use to represent both the land of Israel and also Jerusalem. So how did it begin? And also what were some of the early important features of this movement? And that's what I want to talk a little bit about. The movement emerges very much toward the middle of the 19th century, most notably by two rabbis initially, who wouldn't be called technically early Zionists because the movement itself as a political movement doesn't really emerge until a little bit later under the auspices of two names that most people have generally heard of and that is Theodor Herzl and also Leon Pinsker. Theodor Herzl actually published his ideas of the concept of a state for the Jews in 1896 and his Eastern European counterpart Leon Pinsker published his famous work known as Auto-Emancipation in 1882. Very different in scope, but essentially with the same idea, wanting a home for the Jews. The next major feature came in this story of where would this be? And also, how would the Jews reconstitute as a nation? After these famous works were published, we also witness events in Europe that lead to quite a great crisis. You have the Dreyfus Affair in France, which le leads to a re-emergence of an upsurge of anti-Semitism, making Jews in Western Europe and Central Europe wonder whether or not emancipation has failed or even at the very least has cracks in it. And we also witness much earlier in 1881 uh, pogroms in Russia after the assassination of the Tsar. Essentially what this meant was there was an urgency for a greater discussion about this ideology. In 1897, the first Zionist Congress is held in Basel and the topic is very, very important because Jews in Eastern Europe are deemed to be in existential peril. Around the turn of the 20th century in 1903, a great discussion is made on where would this place be? For the traditionalists, mostly those of course from Eastern Europe and mostly from the Russian Empire, the only place that they could contemplate because of its link to Jewish peoplehood was uh, the original land of Israel, which was at, at that time Ottoman Palestine. However, uh, individuals such as Herzl actually believed that because he wanted a political solution, he was not so hell-bent on Palestine. Herzl dies prematurely and of course Palestine is finally decided on at the Zionist Congress. The next major date of course is we witnessed both the uh, commencement of the First World War, uh, the Balfour Declaration quite famous in 1917 where we have the British Crown uh, expressing an interest in a Jewish home in that region and of course with 1918 the end of what we would call the Age of Empire which leads to a complete geopolitical shift. With this we see 
the whole Zionist narrative changed dramatically. Cartography changes, alliances change, and also by this time, most importantly, we are no longer talking about this one concept of political Zionism. We're not talking about an idea. We're talking about a multifaceted movement. So we now are talking about such ideologies as political Zionism, cultural Zionism, religious Zionism. And as the decades move on, we also witness other Zionisms such as revisionist Zionism. And these add to the diversity, but also to the debate. My concluding statement marks a very, very important landmark in this whole discussion of Zionism, and that is the British being awarded a mandate over what becomes known as Mandate Palestine. The League of Nations also afford the British uh, the opportunity to invest in that area, and with this investment, the British Crown uh, want the Jewish people to actually build up the land. What we see embedded uh, in the, the whole charter for the mandate for Palestine uh, is Jewish emigration and also, I suppose, the upbuilding of this Jewish home. And thus we see the formation and a very solid grounding of this movement that, of course, eventually leads to state formation much later. The crux of the story is it starts off as a very small movement. You have migration from 1881 and it's not until the early 20th century that it starts to gain momentum. I hope from this short presentation, what you'll go away with is a little bit of an understanding as to what this term means. And also, I suppose, that first 50 years, because when we think of the modern state of Israel today, we're not talking about 1948. It's born in 1948, but the prehistory goes back much, much further. Thank you.